It's wonderful to be able to congratulate the graduating class of 2023 at the convocation this morning on campus of Ashoka University. They have been through a bit of a tumultuous time because of COVID, but at least they got one full year that was free from the coils of this curse and they got some sense of what is campus life at Oshoka University. Congratulations to the class of 2023, um, to the students. I hope you all go out of the university and make us proud in the world. Congratulations to the parents who supported the students all through their journey. And of course, congratulations to all the teachers and staff who made this happen. I want to congratulate all the graduates of the class of 2023. I want to particularly congratulate all the parents and families for the tremendous support that you've given our students. And very much uh, looking morning, forward everyone. to what you're going to do May after I Ashoka. Request everyone to settle uh, down. I wish you all the best. Congratulations Hello to the batch of 2023. To, the uh, to your families for Ashoka University for class you. of 2023. Uh, my you are name in is Bulbul forever. and I welcome you all to this wonderful day and, and I stay hope connected you have a with the institution on forever. this occasion. Dear students of the class of Before 2023, begin, like many congratulations on your graduation put their phones on and as you move on and build your careers, Thank you. I'd like to say that do good to yourselves but also do good to the world. Many congratulations and have great lives. Many congratulations on this important milestone. It's been a joy for us to be part of your journey here and even more of a joy now to see its culmination. Here's wishing you the very best for your careers and life beyond. Congratulations to you, this brand new batch of Ashokans. All the best. I know that you will go out and make a wonderful impact on the world wherever you are. Congratulations to the graduating batch. Make the name of Ashoka shine wherever you go. Congratulations class of 2023. You will soon leave the gates of Ashoka and experience the world outside. We wish you all the best and hope you take all the le learnings and what you've gained and learned from Ashoka and bring your talent and skills to the wider world. You'll all succeed. Wishing you all the best. Take care. Many congratulations to the graduating class of 2023. Your journey from an eager first year to a mature graduate has been remarkable. I'm sure you are ready to make significant contribution in your respective field. And I'm very optimistic about your ability in bringing in changes in the lives of others. Many congratulations to the graduating classes of 2023. Thank you so much for making us proud and wish you all the best for the future. And please remember, you always have a home back here at Ashoka.
the world. Congratulations to the parents. It's wonderful to be able to congratulate the graduating class of 2023 at have the convocation this morning on Thank campus you. of Ashoka University. They have been the through a bit of a tumultuous I time you because all of to COVID. Rise for the but free from the coils of this curse and they got some sense of what is campus life at Oshoka University. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Um, to the students, I hope you all go.
Requesting everyone to applaud for the graduating class of 2023.
Thank you, everyone. May I please request everyone to get seated? I request the Chancellor, Professor Rudrangshu Mukherjee, Vice Chancellor, Professor Shomuk Roy Chaudhary, Chairman Board of Trustees, Dr. Pramat Raj Sinha, and Chief Guest for the ceremony, Professor Sujata Ramdurai, to please come forward for lighting of the lamp. I now request the Chancellor, Professor Radrang Shumukharji, to declare Convocation 2023 open. Professor Sujata Ramadura. Vice Chancellor Shomo Prachodri, founders, parents, colleagues, and last but not the least, the students who are receiving their degrees this morning. A university needs no alibis except a pursuit of learning. Yet, all universities have another enduring alibi, their students. We are gathered here to celebrate today's students who are tomorrow's alumni. Even before I offer my heartiest congratulations to the students caught in the momentary cusp of students and alumni, I must express my delight that we have been able to spend a full academic year free from the shackles of the pandemic. I sincerely hope I'm not speaking too soon. So this morning is a double delight. Another cohort of students going out as ambassadors of Ashoka University, and also a completion of a year during which Ashoka has been able, after two years, to offer to its students its full offering as a residential university, which, bring, which brings together classroom learning, 
as well as peer group learning. That Ashoka has grown is evident. You only have to look around you. What better testimony to Ashoka's growth than the simple fact that the convocation is being held outdoors under this marquee. We could not have sat all of you indoors. I hope you are cool enough, even though today is a day lit up with the warmth of camaraderie. The students taking their degrees are poised to step over the threshold of Ashoka University and enter the University of Life. I sincerely hope that what all of you have learned and imbibed at Ashoka, you will carry forward into the, into the larger university. I would like to believe that Ashoka has imparted to you not only a corpus of knowledge, but also certain values. The importance of critical and independent thinking, the importance of caring and empathy, and most significantly, the importance of integrity and a sense of responsibility to oneself and to the world around us. When you are away from Ashoka, I hope these learnings will remain with you and serve as beacons in your life and the life of others. The University of Life, as you will soon discover, offers two kinds of challenges. One is actually not a challenge, but a yielding to the temptation to stay with the herd. The other is the tougher one to step out on one's own, outside the well-trodden path, and walk on what the Katha Upanishad calls the razor's edge. It is not an easy path. Pilgrims on that path get pelted by fortune, but they stand out as exemplars. I hope Ashoka has equipped at least some of you to walk that difficult road and say with the poet Robert Frost, I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. If some, if not all of you, take that difficult road, the road less traveled by, you will make a difference for yourself and to the world. You would also have done Ashoka proud. We will bask in your reflected glory. You will be our alibi to greatness. As they say in Spain, via con Dios, Go with God. With those, gods, with those words, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I declare this convocation to be open. Thank you, Professor Mukherjee. It is my pleasure to now invite the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Shomak Roy Chaudhary, to address the gathering. Respected Chancellor, Professor Rudangshri Mukherjee, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Pramutrat Sinha, members of the governing body, founders, faculty, um, members of the Ashoka community, and of course, students of Ashoka and their parents, guests. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you to this convocation ceremony of Ashoka University. I would also like to extend my gratitude and welcome to Professor Ramadurai for her presence as chief guest on this important occasion of the university. This is my first convocation as vice chancellor. I joined a few months ago. I've worked around the world at various universities as professor and also as a researcher in astrophysics and space sciences. My research con consists of uh, a detailed look at the large scale properties 
of our universe, which is pretty unique, and has recently been found to be very rapidly expanding. And here I might find myself at the helm of a very unique and very rapidly expanding university, expanding in size, numbers of students, and scope of learning, teaching, and research. As we enter the 10th year of our existence, this unique institution has already earned many, many distinctions. Ashoka is the youngest university in the nation's top 100 ranked institutions. We get more than 10 times as many applications as we have places. In this short period, Ashoka has firmly established itself as a bold and innovative institution which has pioneered the kind of interdisciplinary education that now the national education policy has recommended for all higher educational institutions of India. We are now emerging, as the chancellor pointed out, from some of the most unusual and trying years in recent history, particularly for students and their families. Members of this graduating class today have spent almost half of their student life away from campus. This is why today's occasion is both reassuring and exhilarating, allowing all of us, the faculty, students, administrators, and families, to come together to reaffirm our connection, our deep connection with all aspects of the university, the teaching and learning, as well as the conviviality and the camaraderie inherent in the whole experience. At the current time, our 2,671 students are drawn from 21 countries and within India from 28 states, from 287 towns and cities. We have 158 permanent faculty, another 70 or so visiting faculty. Students enrolled at Ashoka can choose their major from a total of 21 either pure or interdisciplinary options and, and they can pick minors from another 18 disciplines. The university's stated mission is to build an inclusive institution of teaching and research excellence, nurturing responsible leaders for India and the world. And this, in, in this mission, great strides have already been made. Moving forward, our challenge now is to build upon and the already established credentials of our university in the multidisciplinary double arts education with special emphasis on critical thinking, breadth of vision, and making innovative connections between areas of knowledge. We're now including the core scientific disciplines into this tapestry and also putting special emphasis on the creation of knowledge, postgraduate pedagogy, and research for both our faculty and for our students. And this is why this morning's session is so important. We now celebrate the achievements of the students pursuing various postgraduate programs. We now have approximately 125 PhD scholars, and of course the first PhD student to graduate from Ashoka will receive her degree this morning. Research at Ashoka has also carried out some of the most innovative centers of excellence. This year, we are launching several new centers, including the Ashoka Center of People-Centric Energy Transition, and among those in the pipeline include the Isaac Center for Public Policy and Good Governance, Center for Data Science and Analytics, and centers based on artificial intelligence and society. Ashoka faculty have won many notable awards in the past year for their research, and for their publications, including the very prestigious Guggenheim Fellowship, the James Tate Black Prize, and many others. The number of sponsored research projects have gone up more than 50% over the past year. It would be impossible to now list all of them, but to give you some idea, this year Ashoka became one of 12 leading universities in India to be awarded a research grant by the department, the government department of science and technology their uh, promotion of University Research and Scientific Excellence first program. As I said, the university is expanding in size as well. In addition to the 25 acres on which the current campus is situated, we now have acquired a surrounding land 
that will turn us into almost a 100-acre campus. With the Trivedi School of Biosciences already being built, the science area is to follow. We'll go on to build faculty housing and housing for an additional 4,000 undergraduate and postgraduate students. The real report of a university's activities, of course, is presented in the accomplishments of the students. Over the last year, Ashoka has seen a 25% increase in recruiters coming to campus as they recognize our students for their unique skills. Over 350 Ashoka alumni now are in the top institutions of the world, 110 of them in PhD programs of the top universities like Yale, Columbia, Harvard, and Oxford. And many hold postdoctoral positions and faculty positions already. More than 80 alums are now in the top business schools of the world, Harvard, Yale, Wharton, INSEAD. Ashoka students have been recipients of the most prestigious scholarships and fellowships. And to name a few, we have three Rhodes Scholars, two Inlac Scholars, and 17 Fulbright Scholars amongst our graduates. An Ashoka student also became the first and only Indian this year to get the McCall McBain Scholarship at McGill University, the first batch. Many of those present here are also headed towards similar futures. This year, Ashoka University became the first of a handful of universities to adopt the four-year undergraduate program under the new National Education Plan. The first year is the first year of the four years. We are very well prepared for this transition and also for transforming our masters and PhD programs to suit the new template, which will soon be adopted by the rest of the country. In this regard, I would like to particularly express my gratitude to my two colleagues who are on the stage with me, the outgoing Dean of Academic Affairs, Dr. Bharat Ramaswamy, for his careful nurturing of our academic courses and programs, and the implementation of the NEP, and the outgoing Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Debushruti Rai Chaudhary, for her mentoring and looking after our resident student population. I would also like to thank my predecessor, Professor Malavika Sharkar, who has had an um, outstanding contribution during this crucial period of growth of this university. It is now my privilege to call upon founder and chairman of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Pramath Raj Sinha, whom you all know as a pioneering force in Indian higher education. Pramath has worn many hats from establishing the Young India Fellowship at Ashoka to being the founding dean of the Indian School of Business. His recent book, Learn, Don't Study, has all the practical advice for students and their families that I could have given you today. Dr. Sinha. Thank you, Shomak. And a big congratulations to our Vice Chancellor. This is his first convocation, so big, big hand. Congratulations, class of 2023. Uh, and especially congratulations to all the parents, families, grandparents who are here with us today. A big round of applause. And to all our faculty and staff for having created this amazing event for all of us. Uh, it is my duty today to present to you our chief guest and keynote speaker. And it is truly a privilege and honor to be introducing Professor Sujata Ramdurai. Professor Ramdurai is a professor of mathematics at the University of British Columbia, where she also holds the Canada Chair Professor in Mathematics. Uh, she did her PhD at TIFR, where she was also a professor before she moved to British Columbia. Uh, she did her bachelor's degree at St. Joseph's uh, in Bangalore and her master's from the Annamalai University in Chennai. There are a whole host of accolades and achievements, but I'll keep it brief, uh, only to say that she was a member of the National Knowledge Commission. Uh, she was a member of the National Innovation Council, the Prime Minister's Scientific Advisory Council, uh, which uh, she was on for about six years in uh, uh, till 2014. She's the recipient of the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award, which is the 
highest honor for scientists in India. The first ever Indian to win the ICTP Ramanujan Prize. The Krieger Nelson Prize uh, is something she was awarded in 2020 and just most recently the government of India awarded her the Padma Shri in 2023. Professor Ramadurai grew up in Bangalore uh, and has always spoken very fondly about her grandmother who inspired her to study, work, and taught her the value of discipline. I was fascinated and inspired to hear the story where her grandmother taught her a telling lesson about how you hang the clothes on the clothesline to dry and how that tells you something about the kind of person you are and the kind of home you run. As one of the few women in STEM at her level, she has always made a strong case for women being equal partners and seekers uh, of knowledge. I think it's truly significant that on this day, at this convocation, we are graduating our first PhD, who is a woman in STEM. Her love for mathematics is deeply rooted in its presence in the everyday. Her interest in math developed through practice, uh, which is, of course, the one simple demand of the subject. And she talks about how, as a child with her brother, when they would drive around in Bangalore, she would add up the digits on the uh, number plates of the vehicles in town to try and be in competition with her brother. Professor Ramadurai is also a survivor of brain cancer, an illness that posed a serious threat to her mathematical abilities, but birthed a new interest in art through coloring books, bringing her back to abstraction, unexpected patterns, and the pure aesthetics of mathematics. As you can tell, I've been stalking her in preparing for this introduction. All I can say is that I've become a fanboy, and I know that all of you will become fanboys and girls after she's done talking to us. Let me present to you Professor Sujata Ramdurai. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Chancellor, distinguished guests on the dais, other eminent guests, students, families, administrative staff, and faculty of Ashoka University. Thank you for the kind words of introduction. It's a great pleasure and privilege to be here and to be able to address the outgoing graduates. Ashoka, I view, I've always been interested in the way the education scene is unfolding in India, especially in tertiary education. And I considered Ashoka as a very interesting experiment it's really nice to be here, see it in reality, rooted in reality, see the shape it's taking. Today's graduates are the future harbingers of its glory to come. Congratulations. I have a presentation, and if we can get that going, I'm going to mix the presentation with uh, a freewheeling kind of talk. Right. So the title, I've called it The Enduring Allure of the Arts, The Beauty of Math, and Creativity in Science. I'm going to start with some images. The first one, I hope people can recognize this. These are mango flowers, which I used to love. This was one of the things I look forward to from a very young age as a heralder of spring. And these are mangoes. And I'm going to now move to these two lines from Kalidasa's Raghuvancha, which I'm not going to read. 
but these are very two famous lines which describe the bees and the mango flowers and the arrival of spring in india we have our way at least for me one of the ways of identifying with spring is to listen to this very nice bandish in kalavati rag gangubai hangal is a famous exponent of this bolena lagi koyaliya bhramare bhramate madumas aayi now let me move jump from india to japan so these are cherry blossoms sakura as they are called in japan and here is an important poem from japanese literature i'm not going to read it for you but again the heian poetry which is from the 9th and 10th century japan they have a whole host of poems celebrating human moods and nature arrival of winter arrival of autumn arrival of spring and when i first got interested in japanese poetry i was also struck by some commonalities with sangam literature and what is the commonality the japanese use pivot words so for instance this is one of the famous blooms it's called somei yoshino a kind of cherry blossoms and they use colors as connotation as connoting human feelings or values so for instance the color purple signifies romance and love and in sangam poetry you have geographical regions signifying something that's familiar to human beings so for instance the marudai that is the low lying lands signifies something that's impermanent the opposite of constancy now the japanese celebrate cherry blossoms even today there's they go on picnics it's called hanami and there's even a special word for the feeling one develops for cherry blossoms the impermanence of cherry blossoms mono no aware it's a complex sense of pathos and appreciation for the reality of impermanence so i see all of these people kalidasa and these japanese poets as early eco poets and that literature as eco literature and today there's a sense of urgency as we think of climate and the environment and that's where i think institutions like ashoka which approach education from a wholesome comprehensive view is very important because it's trying to bring together different streams of thinking and how do we emerge better in dealing with the problems that we are facing or that that are incumbent upon us but the cherry blossoms also have a darker side and that relates to identity after pearl harbor many in the united states saw cherry blossom as a signal as a symbol of the enemy and demanded that they be cut down yet today cherry blossoms in bloom cherry trees in bloom in washington soothes and calms and just an indicator of how people love it and appreciate it is easy to be found in social media with the number of instagram images and so on so there is something to be learned from this for me you know nature can evoke a range of emotions in human beings and different civilizations somehow have brought this to the fore in their own ways and how do we find what is common in this what is common in being human unfortunately in today's digital age and technology we are fastly losing that and i hope the approach of institutions like ashoka which stress on critical thinking as well as the liberal arts brings to the fore the true appreciation of the strength and the permanency of the arts its strength by way of inspiration by way of timelessness and it is that timelessness that i see in mathematics as compared to other sciences you know we still deal with theorems which are thousands of years old and the beauty of math so this figure that i'm showing you it has a lot of mathematical meaning it's really a kind of surface and there's a lot of deep mathematics that can be teased out of this and this i don't know if people know but this 
formula, which goes back a few centuries, was voted as the most beautiful formula in math a few years ago. So those of us who do math, at least for me, we see math as a language, we see math as an art, and we also see the beauty in math. When things come together, you know, different things coming together, and then suddenly fitting together in perfection, when we prove a theorem. And then when we see the connection that happens within different substreams of mathematics, as well as the connection or the role that mathematics plays in different areas, you know, that critical thinking, you think, okay, it's a dry subject, it's rigor, it's logic, but then it has connections to a whole variety of other human endeavors. Here is something that I would like you to remember as far as the last part of my title was con concerned, which was the creativity of science. This is Stefan's Quintet. This is an image from the James Webb Telescope. And I think there's a lot of art and beauty in this. So, and I wish the people doing the humanities would, you know, you just spend some time going to the NASA website or the James Webb website, looking at all the latest images of the cosmos and try to think of what emotions that brings up in you. And how do you communicate that to scientists? That's very important, I feel, because as it was mentioned, after my health incident, I was left wondering if I could ever come back to do mathematics. And one of the things that really helped me was a doctor's advice. And the doctor said, all your life you have been using certain neurons in your brain. Only a part of your neurons have been networking. And those are the neurons that are related to logical, rational thinking, etc., etc. So try to use the strength of the other neurons so that the neurons which have been incapacitated can bloom again. And then meanwhile, scientists, till then people had thought that the brain is, till a few years ago, people had thought that the brain is a done thing beyond a certain number of years, whereas then they discovered neuroplasticity. And then dealing with art lent a different awareness as I was recuperating from chemotherapy and uh, trying to get back to work. It brought back key awareness which I had not ever noticed before. For instance, I could distinguish between the different shades of green. The green of the leaves in the early mango leaves, the green of the leaves in spring in Canada outside my window and so on. And I think there's a lot to be said about these different streams coming together, critical thinking versus literature and art and so on. Let me come now to, I know that a large number of students, I, my address as it was communicated to me was for the liberal arts, humanities and also the people in economics. economics. I don't have much to say of, about economics very naive in that, but one thing that concerns me, and I know that it should be something that people think about, and again, here I think the people with the liberal arts have a role to play in this, is how do we deal with inequity, which we know is growing? How do we deal, especially post-pandemic and post all the new economic experiments going around the world, how do we deal with the consequences of that? Now, around circa 2, 2023, there are different kinds of truths. There's the universal truth that we as mathematicians try to deal with, which we try to prove a theorem. When we prove a theorem, that is the truth. And you have used axioms in getting to that universal truth. And then of course, there's post-truth or alternative facts. And then there's manufactured truth, thanks to social media. And soon, with all the revolution that's happening in artificial intelligence, there's going to be ushered a fake truth. How do we teach the next, next generations to sift the truth and truth as it should be and not truth as it is manufactured or distinguished fake truths? How do we teach? And that's, I think, very important and it should happen some that's an education that should be incorporated right from the school. It's a new skill that our future generations should have. If, we, if critical thinking is to go hand in hand with reality and the truth. And of course, in India, we have this famous saying, ekam sat. Truth is one, but the wise men approach it in different ways. But 
I want this truth to be approached in the right ways, not manufactured or fake ways. So how do we ensure that? And that's again, I think, a place where, I, there's an area where institutions like Ashoka have a great role to play. And the future trainees and alumni of this university and the programs that it offers will have to play a role in that emerging world. So let me close my convocation address with the last few words. I like to dwell on truth and beauty. And as mathematicians and scientists, I think one thing we are trained in is to recognize the limitations of what can be perceived as truth and to confront things with a certain honesty. The famous example is, of course, what's called the incompleteness theorem due to Kurt Gödel, who's a logician, and this theorem was proved in 1931. It's considered one of the astounding intellectual achievements. And initially, for the mathematicians of that age, it appeared to be shocking because it seemed to be saying that any reasonable mathematical system, there will always be true statements that cannot be proved from the existing axioms within the system. So we have somehow flipped that today. There are a lot of truths that can be manufactured given a certain set of operating axioms which can change according to place, geography, time, etc. How do we negotiate all these new pathways? And I think this is where the future students, the graduating alumni, have a great role to play. And when we talk of arts, an other important thing that comes to mind is design. So Steve Jobs, who I consider one of the important innovators, he said that the design aspects that he brought to his work was because he took a variety of courses, ranging from poetry to Chinese calligraphy. And I think Ashoka has a role to play there again. You know, you can create the future designers who are relevant to the given context, to a given situation in India. And how do you create a new set of scholars who know, you know, the problems are similar around the world. We don't need to keep reinventing the wheel. What we need is a set of people who know how to apply what they have learned to similar contexts in differing, re differing regions. So these are all skills that I think you're all equipped with. I wish you all the very best. It's a proud moment for all of you. You have worked hard and would like to congratulate you. And the two, I call it the twain should meet. We have heard of this much repeated statement, the East is East, the West is West, and the twain shall never meet. But I would like to apply it to the science and the arts, or rather what I call from STEM to STEAM. STEM is science, technology, education, and mathematics. And I would like to insert an A in that, which is arts. And a great future ahead, lies ahead of you. You have challenges. There's no doubt about that. And coming back to my original photographs about cherry blossoms and mangoes, both of them face a common problem, and that's climate change. The Japanese are worried because there were different varieties of cherry blossoms. But most of cherry blossoms were replaced by this particular cultivar. One of them, the pink ones, that was uh, the Somei Ishino, as it's called, because it was quick to harvest, and technology and culture came together to create that. And most of Japan now has that kind of cherry blossoms. And the Japanese are seriously worried that with the impending climate crisis, they are going to lose all their cherry blossom trees. And how are they going to deal with it? And in India, it's a similar problem with mangoes. But thankfully, we have hundreds of varieties of mangoes. And, but I still think that's a problem we have to deal with. And these are areas that require serious thinking. It's not just technology. It's science, technology, culture. And again, here, humanities has a role to play. I wish you all the very best as you navigate the future. Congratulations. Wishing the families in this very proud moment. You have a reason to be proud. And all the graduating students, lie back, enjoy, and then begin the hard work again. Stay passionate. Stay courageous, stay hopeful. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ram Durai, for such insightful and thought-provoking views with us all. It is now time for the awarding of degrees to the graduate students. I request the Chancellor, Professor Mukherjee, to hand out the degrees. I call upon Professor Bharat Ramaswamy, Dean Academic Affairs, to take the podium. Hi. 
good morning to you all. Um, may I request the Chancellor, Professor Mukherjee? Thank you. Uh, may I request the Chancellor to admit the students present at the convocation to their degree or diploma. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of Ashoka University, I admit you all to the degree, degrees of the PhD, Master's, and Postgraduate Diploma programs, and I charge you that ever in your thought and action, you prove yourself worthy of the honor conferred on you. Thank you. Professor Mukherjee, it is my privilege to present the students of the PhD, Master's and PG Diploma in Advanced Studies and Research Program, whose names are set out on the list and who have qualified to receive the degree or diploma. Uh, I request that they may please be awarded the degree and diploma. So. Uh, While your graduation is a significant personal milestone, we begin with, a note, uh, with, with an important milestone for, the, uh, for us as well, for Ashoka. And that is the graduation of the first PhD scholar of the university. Uh, before I call upon her, I just want to say that the PhD program in Ashoka started in 2017. And we, of course, want to do world-class research. Uh, a research of more than 100 graduate students have already been published in the leading journals. Uh, uh, so, and we expect, of course, this to rise exponentially. Raghavi Garg the first PhD scholar of Ashoka University has, has completed her thesis titled, uh, titled Normative Constraints and Behavior under the supervision of Professor Avinash Bora, who is here. Uh, her research explores how norms constrain individual behavior and influence aggregate outcomes in the presence of interaction. Raghavi Garg. <laughs> now we turn to the master's programs. MA Economics, Abhinav Kumar Jain. Uh, Aditi Samma Kamlade. Amrita Varshini. Ananta Kothari. Daksh Valia Summa Kam Laude. Devrat Raghav Magna Kam Laude. Diksha Chavla Kam Laude. Ishan Jain. Ishan Patak. Janvi Mittal, Jasehat Singh, 
जानवी मित्तल जानवी मित्तल जैसे हाथ सिंह मनीत सिंह मनीत सिंह नंदनी एस सुमा कम लौड़े निखिल भूयरू मैगना कम लौड़े ओशन लोधी पलक रहलन पारुल वर्मा प्रशंसा भदौरिया श्रेया जैन सिमरप्रीत कौर ओबरॉय सिमरन सिंह शौविक रॉय तनिषा गुप्ता वगीशा पांडे वंशिका टंडन कम लौडे आदित्य शंकर एम ए इंग्लिश आदित्य विक्रम श्रीवास्तव अंगना सिन्हा रे ज्योतुला साई मुकेश चंद्र लवीना झांगियानी सुवृदी बैनर्जी एमएलएस अफशाना बानो कम लौडे चारू मित्रा सरदाना सुमा कम लौडे देवलीना बागची मैगना कम लौडे मनोज कुमार रेड्डी दिने मुस्कान गर्ग मैगना कम लौडे सारांश कुमार गुप्ता नाउ स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ द ए एस पी प्रोग्राम आदिया जसवाल मैगना कम लौड़े आर वार्षणी कम लौड़े आरोही शर्मा सुमा कम लौड़े आर्या झावेरी आरजू आशका कौशल शाह
आशना सेठी सुमा कम लौड़े आस्था शर्मा मैंगना कम लौड़े अब्दुल सलाम जैना याकूब अभय नटराजन हरि अभीर भल्ला मैगना कम लौड़े अभिमन्यु संदीप तिम्बाड़िया सुमा कम लौड़े अभिरूप चैटर्जी मैगना कम लौड़े अभिषेक नायक कम लौड़े अधीश अधीश घोष मैगना कम लौड़े अदिति जैन मैगना कम लौड़े अदिति अदिति तिबारेवाल कम लौड़े आदित्य वरुण शंकर अद्वैता सिंह मैगना कम लौड़े अद्वैत जय कुमार सुमा कम लौड़े आदिया शर्मा अगस्तिया चावला कम लौड़े अगम वालिया अहमद फैजल महमूद आकांक्षा मिश्रा सुमा कम लौड़े आकांक्षा स्वामी मैगना कम लौड़े अक्षर निरंजन कटारिया कम लौड़े अलताक्षी गुजैन कम लौड़े एल्फ्रेड दिमारी मैगना कम लौड़े अलीडा उमरुंगी कम लौड़े एमिश अग्रवाल सुमा कम लौड़े अमरीशा सिन्हा मैगना कम लौड़े अनन्या छिब्बा सुमा कम लौड़े अनन्या देसाई अनिरुद्ध वदादी सुमा कम लौड़े अंजना रमेश मैगना कम लौड़े अंकित वेंजू श्रीश्रा सुमा कम लौड़े अंशिका झाम अनुदर्श एस मैगना कम लौड़े अनुकृति चावला सुमा कम लौड़े अनुकृति सिंह सुमा कम लौड़े
Anulya P. Anusha Pant, Summa Cum Laude. Anushka Bidani, Cum Laude. Anushka Singh, Cum Laude. Anushna Palit. Anushri Tiwari, Kam Laude. Anzila Samad, Magna Kam Laude. Ardra, KS. Arvind Guru Raj, Magna Kam Laude. Arya Amritanshu, Summa Kam Laude. Arya Nagar. Aryan Ramachandran, Magna Kam Laude. Ashuto Sharma, Summa Kam Laude. Ashwin Menon. Atharvi Bias. Avani Maru. Aisha Dash Ayush Agrawal, Kam Laude Bharati A, Magna Kam Laude Bhargavi Gurudu Bhavi Kapadia, Magna Kam Laude Birital Raj Vagle, Kam Laude Brinda Khanna Brishti Bose, Kam Laude Chandrasekhar Mishra Charu Velatur Charvi Kaul Chireyu Banga Dava Tashi, Kam Laude. Dev Ghosh, Magna Kam Laude. Divansh Singh, Matharu, Samma Kam Laude. Dia Isha, Summa Kam Laude. I don't have any names. Uh, we have now reached uh, up to the alphabet D. So the other deans will now huh, call out the other names. Congratulations. Thank you, Professor Bharat. May I now request Dean of Student Affairs, Dean of Research, apologies, Professor Gautam Menon to please take the DS and Chancellor Professor Mukherjee to please continue handing out the diplomas.
So let me start with the names that begin with an E. Isha Garg. Fabian Mukwati. Gauri Bhaukar, Sumakam Laura. Gautam Sundar, Magna Kam Laura. George Stephen Poonan, Kam Laura. Gulid Ahmed Kali. Harris Rashid, Kam Laura. Harsha Mini. Harshita Bedi, Kam Laura. Hemang Sharma. Idan Sharma, Magna Kam Laura. Irtiza Jan Bhatt. Isha Dasari, Kam Laura. Isha Singh, Magna Kam Laura. Ishan Balani, Kam Laura. Ishika Rohit Chhabria. Ishita Zuchi. Jay Desai. Jayavardhan Garg, Magna Kam Laura. Jaskirat Singh. Janish Raj Bajracharya, Magna Kam Laura. Janya Vadwani, Suma Kam Laura. Jovan Bijo Chakalaka, Kam Laura. Jyoti Antal. K. Nitya Devaya, Magna Kam Laura. Kabir Singh. Kalyani Garud. Karishni Puri. Kartik Tiwari, Magna Kam Laura. Kavita Pal, Kam Laura. Kavya Satish, Suma Kam Laura. Kayan Dadi Burjor, Suma Kam Laura. Kushi Bhatia, Suma Kam Laura. Kushi Boken. Kushi Naveen Shetty, Magna Kam Laura. Kiran Sahani, Magna Kam Laura.
Krish Alan De Silva. Sorry, Kiran Sam. Krithanya Mahajan, Magna Cum Laude. Kriti Kanduri. Lokesh Aroda. Mahika Vikram Rajwade. Manish Rajani, come louder. Mannat Asla, Magna, come louder. Manvi Narwal, come louder. Manvika Gulati. Manya Shil. Mayank Kumar Sharma. Mohammed Zobeb Akhtar, Kum Lauda. Meera Anand, Magna Kum Lauda. Mehak Mehta, Magna Kum Lauda. Mehak Puri. Mehak Sanghera, Kum Lauda. Mehak Basantani, Magna Kum Lauda. Mehul Singla, Magna Kum Lauda. Meherat Biruk Tesfaye, Kum Lauda. Minakshi Malik, Magna Kum Lauda. Muhammad Zahir Ali. Mohit Kumar, Mukesh Sharma, Muskan Chaudhary, Muskan Godial. Nandan Sankriti Kaushik, come louder. Nasheem Ashraf, Magna, come louder. Nathan Narde, Magna, come louder. Nidhi Munod, Nidish Birhade, Magna Kum Lauda, Nidup Dorji, Magna Kum Lauda. Niharika Narayan V, Suma Kum Lauda. Nikhil Sunil Bhave, Kum Lauda.
Nishka Mishra, Magna Cum Laude. Nishta Dani, Summa Cum Laude. Nishta Sanjeev Gosevade, Summa Cum Laude. Nitya Kishor Nair, Summa Cum Laude. Oishiki Ganguli, Summa Cum Laude. Ojas Aroda, Magna Cum Laude. Os Kohli, Cum Laude. Pia Tandon, Magna Cum Laude. Purna Rathi, Summa Cum Laude. Pradyumna Kumar. Praharsh Prasoon, Summa Cum Laude. Pranav Vali, Summa Cum Laude. Prashasti Agarwal. Prashasti Jain. Pratha Srivastava. Pratham Singh. Pratul Chaturvedi, Cum Laude. Pratyush Kumar, Magna Cum Laude. Prisha Tiwari, Summa Cum Laude. Priyadatha Sajan, Magna Cum Laude. Priyanka Jha, Magna Cum Laude. Priyan Shujraj, Magna Cum Laude. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Menon. Thank you, Professor Menon. May I please humbly request all the parents standing in the middle aisle to take a seat. The view is getting blocked for the parents calmly sitting at the back. May I please request you to take a seat. Thank you so much. I'll now request Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Debushruti Roy Chaudhary, to please take the DS, and Chancellor Professor Mukherjee to please continue hand out the diplomas. Radhika Banerjee, Magna Cum Laude. Raghav Puri. Rahul Agarwal. Ranjini Ghosh, Kam Laude. Ria Lakhiani, Magna Cum Laude.
Ridim Gupta, Magna Cum Laude. Rishav Sharma. Rishwajit Singh, Magna Cum Laude. Ritu Hachandani, Sumakam Laude. Ritul Satish, Sumakam Laude. Rohan Manoj, Magna Cum Laude. Rohit P. Vashishta. Rukmini Charya, Sumakam Laude. Sadia Pirzada, Magna Cum Laude. Sagara and Johnny, Magna Cum Laude. Sahana Anand, Magna Cum Laude. Sahana Shah Nawaz, Magna Cum Laude. Sahil Balmiki, Cum Laude. Sahil Verma. Sai Pranit Vuputturi. Samir Rana, Magna Cum Laude. Samika Vashisht, Magna Cum Laude. Sania Nasarjang. Sanjana Sheet, Summa Cum Laude. Sarod S. S. <clears throat> Sasi Kumar P. Magna Cum Laude. Sejal Parmar, Magna Cum Laude. Sejal Yadav, Magna Cum Laude. Shabana Hashmi. Shahid Rashid Kam Laude. Shambhavi Kurup Kam Laude. Sharan Kaur Hunjan. Shiva Ashraf Ali, Shivani, Shivani Sureshnath, Shrija Singh Kamlade. Sriyangshi Athar Kamlade, Shreya Sharma Magna Kamlade, Shubhasri Jha Magna Kamlade, Shukre Ahmed Ajmal. Siddharth Kutti, Magna Cum Laude. Siddhartha Prabhakar Nadathur.
Simran Javeri Kamlade. Smriti Sanjeev Nambudiri, Magna Cum Laude. Sneha Jindal, Summa Cum Laude. Soham Bhakti, Cum Laude. Soham De, Magna Cum Laude. Soham Sadashiv Kakar, Summa Cum Laude. Somya Vadva, Summa Cum Laude. Sona J. Paitika Vedamurti Srikar Kumar Srishti Ojha Lohani Kam Laude Stuti Khandalwal Summa Kam Laude Supreet Kaur, Magna Cum Laude. Suryansh Dhatwalia. Sushrita Nandi. Suyasha Shakya, Summa Cum Laude. Swati Aditya Kam Laude Tanish Bafna Summa Kam Laude Tanisha Agarwal Summa Kam Laude Tanmay Singh Magna Kam Laude Tanvi Krishna Kumar, Magna Cum Laude. Tanvi Manish Savani, Magna Cum Laude. Tanya Chandra, Magna Cum Laude. Tejasvini Vandi Villu, Cum Laude. Tenzin Yaka Kam Laude Udayan Mehra Magna Kam Laude Upasana Karte Kam Laude Veda D Magna Kam Laude Vedant Kam Laude Vedant Agarwal Kam Laude Bivu Ajival Kam Laude Vivod Naveen Nautyal Kam Laude Vidit Singh, Kam Laude Vipasha Barot Vivek Bhattacharya Vako Leban Tache 
यश अग्रवाल सुमा कमलारे यशराज गुप्ता यशवी केदिया कमलारे यजस्टीफ चौहान युक्ता आहूजा युवान ठाकुर जोरावर सिंह गुम्मन कमलारे तन्वी निरंजन कुमार कमलारे उष्मिता सेठ मैग्ना कमलारे मधुरा कौर पूजा काडाबोनिया बोयना सॉरी शुभम हितेश दया प्रिया सन्याल प्रांशु राठी अभिनीत आनंद मैग्नकम लॉरे ऐशिनी सिंह कम लॉरे अक्षत सिंह कम लॉरे अनन्या गुप्ता अनन्या भावले कम लॉरे अर्पित तनुल आयुष चंद्रकांत मिश्री देविका गोस्वामी कमलादे दिव्यानी तुली कमलादे ईशा सिन्हा गौतम डेका मैग्ना कमलारे माही जैन निहारिका मेहरोत्रा ओमकार मिश्रा कमलारे पीयूष गंभीर प्रणति जमुला राजवर्धन घोरपारे कमलारे साध्वी दास कमलारे सम्राग्री चक्रवर्ती सुमा कमलारे संचिता साहू सर्वक साहू मैग्ना कमलारे शिवानी सलील देशमुख सुमा कमलारे सुभर आकृति सुचीर कालरा सुयश गोयंका 
सर्ण रचना अजमपुर ताविश भाटिया मैग्ना कम लॉरे विवान गुप्ता सुमा कम लॉरे विवान शर्मा कम लॉरे वांग चेन सोमो कम लॉरे युगांधरा शिंदे अभिव्यक्ति नटराजन अनन्या गुप्ता पीयूष नेपाल मैग्ना कम लॉरे श्रेया जैन नव्या मल्होत्रा अंकित शर्मा मैग्ना कम लॉरे अनुभव भट्टाचार्य जी तनिषा सिंह कम लॉरे समन फतिमा प्रांशु राली थैंक यू प्रोफेसर मुखर्जी थैंक यू डीन रॉय चौधरी प्रोफेसर मुखर्जी आई नाउ present the students who are not at the convocation i request that they may please be awarded the degree postgraduate diploma in absentia by virtue of the authority vested in me as chancellor of ashoka university i award to the masters and postgraduate diploma program degrees in absentia to all those successful students who could not receive the degree of po or postgraduate diploma in person at this convocation thank you professor mukherjee we will now have the graduated students take the oath i request all the students to please stand up I request the Chancellor, Professor Mukherjee, to administer the oath. Now I'll go slowly. Uh, please repeat after me. The ancient Indian king. after whom this university is named asked the question what is dhamma he answered it is having few faults and many good deeds mercy charity truthfulness and integrity i commit myself to these values and through them 
move from the unreal to the real, from darkness to light, and from death to immortality. Thank you, Professor Mukherjee. You can all sit now. Thank you. With this, we come to the end of the ceremony. I request the Pro Vice Chancellor, Venkat Ishwara, to bring the proceedings to a close by delivering the vote of thanks. I promise not to take too long. Dear Professor Sujata Ramadurai, a big thank you for taking out time to be present at Ashoka University's convocation, especially when the temperatures were threatening to be 45, but it's very pleasant inside. Today is a big day for all graduating students. Congratulations to each and every one of you present. Well done and richly deserved. Look around you, soak in the environment, and preserve all the memories of the day, and make sure you managed to capture a ton of selfies. To all the parents and families gathered today, thank you for being here and making the day memorable. We are grateful because you chose Ashoka as the preferred university for your children, and we hope that their individual journeys and growth have reinforced your convictions. Thank you to all faculty who have taught, mentored, and inspired the students. You have been their primary catalyst in their lives, and their journeys would not have been possible without your presence. And Ashoka would not be what it is today without your contribution. A big round of applause to the team that worked uh, very hard to put uh, together today's convocation. The logistics of... <laughs> the logistics of two events must have kept you up for several nights. Well done. I would like to thank the entire Convocations team for this gorgeous event, starting with the chair, Deboshuti Roy Chaudhary, co-chair, Aniha Brar, core team members, Anirban Chakravarti and Shuli Biswas, the OAA, led by Deem Ramaswamy, Pritika Sharma, Disha Chandra Bulbul Yajal, Sachin Sharma, team operations led by Bhaskar Mishra, Ashish Pathak, Pooja Manaktala, IT led by Anu Batra, Chandresh Kumar, Sandeep Ladwal, PR and comms led by Ali Imran, Deepa Guamsi, Samantha Samson, communications led by Saman Wahid, the exam office led by Shantanu Kundu, and then Harshit Thakkar and Anu Singh from the parents and alumni office. Thank you. The university is thankful for the cooperation extended by the registrar's office, starting with admissions all the way to the convocation and then beyond. We are grateful to Vice President External Engagement and his team for their contributions towards building the Ashoka brand through their diverse offerings. The efforts of the admission and outreach teams for bringing the students uh, in every year and year after year, and their contribution has been critical to Ashoka's success. We also thank the development and the financial aid offices for the commitment to make education accessible to all our students. A thank you to our parents' office and communications teams for carrying the message and the mission of Ashoka beyond the world, across the world, sorry. Ashoka is grateful to the Dean of Global Education, Summer and Strategic Programs, and our office for being instrumental in giving our students international exposure through institutional partnerships and exchange programs over the years. The university is indebted to the Dean of Research and Dean of Faculty and their offices for ensuring that a stellar team of scholars and researchers are present at Ashoka. We also express our sincere thanks to the Dean and Associate Dean of Academic Affairs as well as their entire offices for their tireless work to, en to ensure that diverse academic pursuits of our students are always available as opportunities. The Career and Development Office deserves our heartfelt appreciation for helping our students achieve their professional goals. We also express our gratitude to the IT personnel for their efforts in ensuring that students are able to pursue their academic 
programs with ease. Here is also thanking the Centers of Excellence at Ashoka for offering our students an opportunity to be part of innovative programs beyond their uh, curricular requirements. The Center of Writing and Communication, the Office of Learning Support, and the library have been guiding our students and nurturing them in the various functions. A big thank you. The university is also grateful to the Center for Wellbeing for providing the Ashoka community with much needed space of comfort and care. This is a moment to appreciate the contributions of the Office of Student Affairs, who are critical uh, to every student's life at Ashoka, be it in their extracurricular ex uh, ex activities or the student experience. A special shout out to the sports team for ensuring that students enjoy a sporting experience on campus. The university is truly grateful to Vice President Operations and his entire team, which includes infirmary, housekeeping, maintenance, dining, security, transport, laundry, horticulture, for ensuring a hassle-free, safe campus experience for all our students. I would like to specifically acknowledge the entire support staff at Ashoka, who, who in their own ways have stood with the students behind the scenes. We owe them a huge debt of gratitude. Now this one is special. To all the bhaiyas and didis, this day is yours too. You have toiled hard over the past four years behind the scenes to ensure that all our students on campus lead a comfortable life. To each and every one of you, a big thank you. To the graduating students, stay connected with Ashoka. You have completed your journey, but only as a student and have embarked on the road of becoming an alum. Come back and support the university that has nurtured you. Mentor and assist future batches of students. They will need your experience and wisdom. The alumni office will work closely with you in this regard. Finally, a thank you to Chancellor Mukherjee, Vice Chancellor Roy Choudhury, and to all our guests for making this day memorable. Thank you so much, sir. I request everyone to please rise for the national anthem. शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय दाता जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 now seat down. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2023. Let's have a huge round of applause for you all. I request the students and guests to please be seated till the, till the convocation procession exits the hall.
hope you've had a good morning and thank you for your presence on this important occasion. It would have surely been incomplete without you all. I seek your attention for a quick few announcements. Graduated students are requested to collect their alumni booklet and a memento from the alumni desk set up at the sports MPH. Merchandise for the graduating class and their proud parents is also available at the merchandise store set up at the atrium. There's a live photo counter right behind this venue for you to take, capture this moment and take a picture home. I'd also like to inform you that the undergraduate convocation ceremony is scheduled to begin at this venue shortly and we would be grateful for your assistance in decongesting this area. And last, but certainly not the least, lunch has been served at the dining hall. Please seek assistance from the volunteers for directions. Golf carts are also available from this venue to the dining hall. Thank you very much. I would request all guests to please be seated till the student, student procession excuse me, exits the hall. graduated students.
student procession graduating graduating class of 2023 batch
begin, can I please request everyone to give a huge round of applause for the student procession of the graduating class. I would request Chancellor Professor Adrangshu Mukherjee, Vice Chancellor Professor Shomak Roy Chaudhary, and the Chief Guest of the Ceremony, Professor Padmanabhan Balaram, to please come forward for the lighting of the lamp. I now request the Chancellor, Professor Adrangshu Mukherjee, to take the DS and declare Convocation 2023 open. Good afternoon. Uh, before I begin, there are some people in the audience and on the dais who have heard this speech before. So my apologies for boring you once again. But the larger part of this audience hasn't heard this. So this is addressed to them. Professor Padmanavan Balaram, Vice Chancellor Shomok Choudhury, founders, parents, colleagues, and last but not the least, the students who are receiving their degrees this afternoon. A university needs no alibis except the pursuit of learning. Yet, all universities have another enduring alibi, their students. We are gathered here to celebrate today's students who are tomorrow's alumni. Even before I offer my heartiest congratulations to the students caught in the momentary cusp of students and alumni, I must express my delight that we have been able to spend one full academic year free from the shackles of the pandemic. I sincerely hope I'm not speaking too soon. So this afternoon is a double delight. Another cohort of students going out as ambassadors of Ashoka University, and also a completion of a year during which Ashoka has been able, after two years, to offer to its students its full offering as a residential university which brings together classroom learning and peer group learning. That Ashoka has grown is evident. You only have to look around you. What better testimony to Ashoka's growth than the simple fact that this convocation is being held outdoors under this marquee. We could not have sat, all of you, indoors. I hope that you are all cool enough, even though this afternoon is actually lit up by the warmth of camaraderie. 
the students taking their degrees are poised to step over the threshold of Ashoka University and enter the University of Life. I sincerely hope that what all of you have learned and imbibed at Ashoka, you will carry forward into the other larger university. I would like to believe that Ashoka has imparted to you not only a corpus of knowledge, but also certain values, the importance of critical and independent thinking, the importance of caring and empathy, and most significantly, the importance of integrity and a sense of responsibility to oneself and to the world around us. When you are away from Ashoka, I hope these learnings will remain with you and serve as beacons in your life and the life of others. The University of Life, as you will soon discover, offers two kinds of challenges. One is actually not a challenge, but a yielding to the temptation to stay with the herd. The other is the tougher one to step out on one's own, outside the well-trodden path, and walk on what the Katha Upanishad calls the razor's edge. It is not an easy path. Pilgrims on that path get pelted by fortune, but they stand out as exemplars. I hope Ashoka has equipped at least some of you to walk that difficult road and say with the poet Robert Frost, I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. If some, if not all of you, take the difficult road, the road less traveled by, you will make a difference for yourself and to the world. You would also have done Ashoka proud, we will bask in your reflected glory. You will be our alibi to greatness. As they say in Spain, vaya con Dios, go with God. With those words, Mr. Vice Chancellor, I declare this convocation to be open. Thank you, Professor Mukherjee. It is my pleasure to now invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Shomak Roy Chaudhary, to address the gathering. Respected Chancellor, Professor Rudangshri Mukherjee, Chairman of the Board of Trustees and founders of Ashoka University, members of the governing body, faculty and members of the Ashoka community, and of course, students of Ashoka and their parents and guests. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this convocation ceremony of Ashoka University. I would also like to extend my gratitude and welcome to Professor Balram for his presence as chief guest at this important occasion for the university. This is my first convocation as Vice Chancellor of Ashoka University. I have worked around the world at various universities as a professor and as a researcher in astrophysics and space sciences. My research has concerned a detailed look at the large scale properties of the universe, which is pretty unique, and has recently been found to be very rapidly expanding. 
And here I find myself at the helm of a very unique and very rapidly expanding university, expanding in size, numbers, and the scope of learning, teaching, and research. We now enter the 10th year of our existence, and this unique institution has already earned, as you all know, many, many distinctions. Ashoka is the youngest university in the nation's top 100 ranked universities in the country. We get more than 10 times as many applications as we have places. In this short period, Ashoka has firmly established itself as a bold and innovative institution which has pioneered the kind of interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary education that now the new education policy of the nation is now recommending for all higher education institutions of India. We're now emerging from some of the most unusual and trying years, as the Chancellor reminded us, in recent history, particularly for students and their uh, families. Members of this graduating class today have spent almost half of their student life away, either fully or partially away from campus. And this is why today's occasion, in this wonderful atmosphere, under this tent, is both reassuring and exhilarating, allowing all of us, faculty, students, administrators, families, to come together and reaffirm our connection with every aspect of this university. Not just the teaching and learning, but also the conviviality <clears throat> and the camaraderie inherent in the whole student experience. At the current time, we have <clears throat> 2,671 students, and they're drawn from 21 countries. And within India, they come from 28 states, 287 towns and cities. We have 158 permanent faculty and another 70 visiting faculty. Students enrolled at Ashoka can, can choose their major discipline from 21 pure or interdisciplinary options. They can pick minors from another 18 disciplines. The university's stated mission with all of this is to build an inclusive institution of teaching and research excellence, nurturing responsible leaders for India and the world, end of quote. And, and great strides have already been made in that direction in a very short period of time. Moving forward, our challenge now is to build upon this already established credentials of the university in multidisciplinary liberal arts education, with special emphasis on critical thinking, breadth of vision, making innovative connections between areas of knowledge. We are now including the core scientific disciplines into this tapestry and also putting special emphasis on the creation of knowledge, postgraduate pedagogy and research for both our faculty and students. We now have 125 uh, PhD scholars. And as you know, this morning we graduated the first PhD student from this university. We're very proud of the first PhD graduated today. Research at Ashoka is carried out at some of the most innovative centers of excellence. Also, uh, we are, this year we are launching, we have already launched um, several new centers, um, one of them being the Ashoka Center for People-Centric Energy Transition. And the ones amongst, among the ones in the pipeline are a Center for Public Policy and Good Governance, Center for Data Sciences and Analytics, and Center for Digitalization and Artificial Intelligence in Society. Ashoka faculty have won many notable awards in the past year for their research and for their publications, their books, including the very, very prestigious Guggenheim Fellowship in the US, and the James Tate Black Prize, and, and, and many others. The number of sponsored research projects have gone up by more than 50% over the past year, 
it would be impossible for me to give you a whole list right now. But to give you some idea, this year Ashoka became one of 12 leading universities in India to be awarded a research grant, the largest research grant by the Department of Science and Technology from the Government of India, the PERS grant, promotion of university research and scientific excellence. There were only two private universities amongst these 12. As I said, the university is expanding in size as well. In addition to the 25 acres on which the campus is situated now, which is very compact, we have now acquired the surrounding land that will turn us into an almost 100-acre campus. And I'm sure you've gone around and seen some of the building work that's going on. But the Trivedi School of Bioscience is already being built, and the science areas are to follow. We will go on to build housing for faculty and another uh, approximately 4,000 students, undergraduate and postgraduate. The, but the real report of a university's activities is not buildings and expansion. It is presented in the accomplishments of the students. Over the last year, Ashoka has seen a 25% increase in the recruiters coming to campus. After graduation, they, they have been recognizing our students for their unique skills. Over 350 Ashoka alumni are in the top institutions of the world pursuing higher degrees, 110 of them in PhD programs in the top universities of the world, including Harvard, Columbia, Yale, and Oxford. Many are postdoctoral fellows, and some have faculty positions already. More than 80 alumni are in top business schools around the world, Harvard, Yale, Wharton, INSEAD. Ashoka students have been the recipients of the most prestigious scholarships and fellowships, to name a few. We now have three Rhodes Scholars, two in Lac Scholars, and 17 Fulbright Scholars. An Ashoka student this year became the first and only Indian to get the new McCall McBain Scholarship at McGill University. Many of those present here today are also headed towards very similar futures. This year, Ashoka University became the first of a handful of universities to adopt the four-year undergraduate program under the new national education plan. So the first years who are finishing this year are the first year of a four-year program. They're very well prepared. We are very well prepared for this transition uh, because the template was already there. And for transforming then the subsequent masters and PhD programs to suit the new template that will become adopted by the rest of the country. In this regard, I should like to particularly express my gratitude to my colleagues who are on the stage with me, the outgoing Dean of Academic Affairs, Dr. Bharat Ramaswamy, uh, who, uh, for his careful nurturing of our academic courses and programs and the implementation, uh, the first round implementation of the National Education Plan and our outgoing St Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Debushuti Rai Choudhury, for her mentoring and looking after a resident student population. I would also like to thank my predecessor, Professor Malubika Sharkar, who has had an outstanding contribution during this crucial period of growth of this university. And many of you, almost all of you, of course, would have uh, been students under um, her um, guidance. It is now my privilege to call upon our guest of honor today, Professor P. Balaram. Professor Padmanabhan Balaram obtained his uh, BSc in chemistry from Ferguson College in Pune University, and then went on to do an MSc in IIT Kanpur, and a PhD in chemistry from Carnegie Mellon University. He was then a research associate in Harvard University in the early 70s, and then came back to India to join the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. In many ways, Professor Balram is the ideal role model of the Ashoka student. Trained as a chemist, he started one of the first biophysics research groups in India. So you can see how he could easily span different disciplines in science. I first met Professor Balram when I was a third year undergraduate, like many of you, um, about to graduate. And 
in our uh, trip together with the National Science Talent Search uh, team chosen from all around the country, we went to visit his lab in the Institute of Science. And I was totally blown away by not only his personality, but also the work they, they did. And with, as a young student, that had a really transformative uh, effect on me. And it's so wonderful to have him here uh, in this occasion four decades later. He was uh, at the University of Bang Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore from 73 to 2014, and he was director for two terms for, for 10 years. And he has contributed extensively to the areas of, of molecular bi biophysics, chemical biology. In particular, he was the editor of the journal Current Science. It's a very, very interesting journal published in India from 95 to 2013. And the most remarkable thing is that during this year, Professor Balram, during this time, he wrote these editorials, over 300 of them, which are individually very, very remarkable articles. Often editorials of magazines are boring. But Professor Balram's editorials are often used. I've used them in my class for teaching. They're wonderful, wonderful editorials. And so I'm looking forward to Professor Balram's um, uh, address to you today. He is the recipient of several awards, including the Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan in 2014, and the Bruce Merrifield Award of the American Peptide Society. I hand you over to Professor Balram. Good afternoon. Uh, this is the first convocation that I've attended which had drones hovering around. But uh, it's an interesting thing about convocations that uh, the students who are graduating are very young, and the convocation speaker who comes along is very old. And I felt even older when the Vice Chancellor said that he'd heard me four decades ago. Uh, with those remarks, I will really begin my formal presentation. Uh, the Chancellor, Professor Udranksha Mukherjee, Vice Chancellor, Professor Shomak Rai Chaudhary, uh, members of the Board of Trustees, uh, founders of the university, faculty, guests, and most importantly, the graduating class of students and their families. I'm privileged to be with you at this convocation, where many of you will graduate and be ready for the next phase of your careers. Ashoka University is a young institution established with the highest hopes and supported by the remarkable generosity of many individuals. A liberal education in the humanities and the sciences, social sciences amongst them, is what the graduating class has been privileged to receive. I have spent my career at an institution that is very old, 114 years old now, set up in, in 1909, two years before the Grand Darbar in Delhi in 2011, which marked the high noon of the British Empire. The Indian Institute of Science has evolved over a turbulent century and remains today as one of India's foremost academic institutions. On the contrary, many of India's famous universities, which reached heights of academic excellence in the 1960s, notably at Kolkata, Madras, and Delhi, no longer have the aura of scholarship that characterizes great centers of learning. We must understand and recognize the factors that have inhibited our old universities, constrained as they are by the dominating control of central and state governments, if we are to succeed in growing new ones. When invited by Professor Mukherjee and Professor Rai Chaudhary to join all of you on this important day, I wondered what I should say. I have been a scientist all my life, cloistered in the laboratories of the Indian Institute of Science. I still spend my time among scientists at the National Center for Biological Sciences and teach whenever I can. 
The Chancellor is a historian of great eminence. The Vice Chancellor, a scholar, an astrophysicist, researching the vastness of the cosmos. Tied as we are on the dais between science and history, I'm emboldened to make some remarks on science and natural history at a time when the interest in science courses in our colleges is dwindling. Why is science important? Remember, it is the scientific advances of the last two centuries that have driven the modern technological revolution. I'm also aware, as you undoubtedly are, that the last three years have seen an upsurge in the public awareness of science, driven by the coronavirus and the COVID-19 pandemic. RT-PCR, rapid antigen tests, aerosol transmission, mRNA vaccines, and mathematical modeling are terms that are now commonly used in discussions between those unaware of the language of science. They will, of course, soon forget these terms. Remember also that a microscopic particle, 90 nanometers in diameter, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, has brought the world to its knees. 56 years ago, when I graduated from the Ferguson College in Pune and went out into the world with a BSc degree, it was indeed a different world. 37 years ago, when I reached the high point of any academic career, admission to the professorial rank, the world around me was still as it was in the 1960s, largely unchanged. In this interregnum, unknown to me, major revolutions were underway in science and technology. These upheavals spanned a range of disciplines, genome sequencing and genetic engineering and biology, the explosion of computer technologies, and the communications revolution. The internet, the Google search engine, and the cell phone forever transformed the way we live. These technological advances rested on fundamental breakthroughs in physics, chemistry, biology, material science, mathematics, and computer science, often the results of decades of painstaking research. Rarely were they the result of that blinding flash of insight that often makes science look glamorous from the outside. You think of gene sequencing technologies, reflect on the lithium battery, so central to all our lives today, or the electronic processes that drive all our devices, and you will realize that science and technology are inseparable. Even the seeds of Google's page rank algorithm can be found in the literature of the 1950s, when Eugene Garfield laid the foundations for the web of science, ushering in the age of scientometrics, with a very famous paper. Investments in basic research over long periods of time are best made with public funds. It is therefore important that governments across the world take the long view of science, an approach that is indeed difficult in times of floundering economies. Captains of industry, driven by the imperatives of corporate progress, will generally be cautious in investing in basic research. Even private philanthropists in India would generally be disinclined to support an activity whose benefits are not immediately apparent, although there are a few honorable exceptions. I've often been asked a question, what is science? I've always responded that science is the study of nature. That leads to another question, what is nature? The best answer that I have found was in an editorial that appeared in the very first volume of the journal Nature in 1869. The famous biologist, Thomas Huxley, was invited to write the editorial, heralding the appearance of a new science journal. Huxley did not write the editorial. Instead, he translated from an essay in German, written in the mid-18th century by the poet von Goethe. In the poet's words, nature, we are surrounded and embraced by her, powerless to penetrate beyond her, and powerless to separate ourselves from her. 
It is therefore not surprising that the two most influential journals in science are named Nature and Science. Physics and biology are with you all the time, even though you may not choose to recognize the fact. Nothing in the world around you, including yourselves, is divorced from chemistry. Of mathematics, I can do no better than remind you, and although I don't know the veracity of this quote, that Galileo is reported to have once remarked that mathematics is the language in which God wrote the universe. If you paraphrase Galileo, I might add, chemistry is the language in which nature wrote the book of life. The biochemist Arthur Kornberg aptly described chemistry many years ago as the lingua franca of the biological and medical sciences. Science requires tools, and sometimes we underestimate the role of technology in driving science. The theoretical physicist Freeman Dyson once noted that science is often driven by new technologies rather than by new concepts. In the 17th century, two inventions, the telescope and the microscope, forever altered our views of the world. When Galileo pointed the telescope skywards, he opened the field of cosmology, till then restricted by human vision. When Leeuwenhoek examined water under his microscope, he discovered living organisms too small to be seen with the naked eye. He had uncovered the vast science of microbiology, a field which has really impacted public consciousness during the years of the pandemic. Tools are also discovered when fundamental research allows scientists to make observations that lead to far-reaching conclusions and applications. Pasteur's classic resolution of tartaric acid opened the field of stereochemistry with its wide-ranging impact on biochemistry. Fleming's serendipitous discovery of penicillin is another oft-cited example, ushered in the age of antibiotics. In the 20th century, separated by a span of seven decades, two discoveries revolutionized medicine, making diagnostic radiology indispensable for clinical practice. Both came from physics. The first was Ronchin's discovery of X-rays at the dawn of the 20th century. The second, Paul Lotterber's imaging of two concentric tubes of water in the 1970s using nuclear magnetic resonance in inhomogeneous magnetic fields. This was the birth of magnetic resonance imaging. Can there be better examples, or MRI as you know it today, can there be better examples to argue the case for basic science? But those amongst us who ceaselessly marvel at the wonders of nature have asked the question, where did everything we see around us come from? This leads to questions which cannot always be answered. Questions on the origins of the universe, questions on origins of life on Earth. All the natural elements in Mendeleev's periodic table were the Earth's inheritance when it was born. Nucleosynthesis is the prerogative of the stars. In his magisterial survey of the ascent of man, a BBC series in the 1970s, Jacob Bronowski describes the formation of carbon, so essential for life, and I quote, in all the stars there are going on processes which build up the atoms one by one into more complex structure. Matter itself evolves. The word comes from Darwin and biology, but it is the word that changed physics in my lifetime. Bronowski goes on to reflect on the formation of carbon. He says that carbon forms when three helium nuclei collide for one millionth of a millionth of a second, 10 to the minus 12 of a second. And then he says, every carbon atom in every living creature, this includes yourselves, is the result of such a widely improbable collision. Life and biology are indeed improbable, a chance event in our solar system's evolutionary history. I quote again from Jacques Monod, one of the foremost thinkers in biology of the 20th century. He says, the universe was not pregnant with life. 
nor the biosphere with man. Our number came up in the Monte Carlo game. After centuries of science, can one list its most important achievements? As freshly minted graduates and faculty tempered by experience, you might well try. But here I must quote the always quotable physicist Richard Feynman. In his introductory lecture in his now immortal course on undergraduate physics at Caltech, he asks, if in some cataclysm all of scientific knowledge were to be destroyed and only one sentence passed on to the next generation of creatures, what statement would contain the most information in the fewest words? He answers his question. I believe it is the atomic hypothesis or the atomic fact or whatever you wish to call it that all things are made up of atoms and so on. Ironically, the cataclysm that must have occupied Feynman's thoughts in the 1950s and 1960s would have been the threat of nuclear war. Sadly, that prospect appears to have once again emerged. In the world of geopolitics, there is little time to wonder about the fragile thread by which life on Earth hangs and the importance of preserving the natural world, which of course includes the human species, even as unsustainable consumption and development threaten the natural order. In the year 1999-2000, a new century and millennium was born. The journal Nature commissioned a series of essays where established commentators put forth their views on the most important scientific advance of the 20th century. One essay that I read then has stayed in my mind, even after 23 years. The Canadian environmental scientist Václav Schmil argued that the most important scientific advance of the 20th century was the Harbour Bosch industrial synthesis of ammonia. Many of you would have studied in your 12th class books or even 10th class books the industrial synthesis of ammonia from gaseous nitrogen and hydrogen under high pressure and temperature in the presence of a catalyst to yield ammonia. It's a terrible process. Why is it important? It is because it leads to the synthesis of urea and urea is the fertilizer which drove the first agricultural revolution of the 20th century. Famines began to retreat. The last famine that we had in India was an, when I was an undergraduate student. It started in Bihar. We had the Prime Minister then, Lal Bahadur Shastri, in the mid-1960s, telling all students, telling everybody, in fact, not to have one dinner, I think, on Mondays or Tuesdays, and we would all go hungry. Agriculture was transformed by chemistry. Millions of lives which had otherwise been lost were no longer lost. The second agricultural revolution of the 20th century was driven by biology, which is the Green Revolution. The world that you will now encounter faces two threats, both imminent. The first is the specter of food scarcity. Food security measures are crumbling in many countries as a consequence of the ongoing war in Ukraine. The second is the old Cold War bogey of a nuclear exchange. These threats promise to unsettle the global order, thereby denying human populations the benefits accrued by centuries of scientific advance. Human history is often taught as a succession of centuries of unremitting human conflict, with every new age introducing ever more powerful technologies of war. All of them are products of an ever-improving understanding of the material world. Science and technology based on this very same understanding has driven the course of human history, shaping cultures and civilizations. Bronowski in his famous expedition, uh, exposition recounts each advance as he traces the ascent of man. The 20th century began with Planck and the quantum, catalyzing a frenetic pace of advance in physics and chemistry over much of the decades that followed. The revolution in biology began in the mid-1950s, quietly at first, 
when the structure of the gene was revealed, but grew into an unstoppable flow of information, culminating in the first human genome sequence announced as the 21st century were born. Most of you, I suspect, are children of the 21st century. Today, DNA sequences from fossils, ancient DNA, are being used to trace the origins of the human species and the migrations of our ancestors across the earth. This early human history, prehistory, requires the confluence of many disciplines, archaeology, paleontology, molecular biology, and computer science amongst them. The methods of genomics allow us to go even further back in time as we ask questions about the evolution of life on Earth. I leave you with just a thought that the formation of our universe, our sun, our solar system, and our planet must have come first. In the over four and a half billion years of the Earth's existence, human beings, as we might recognize them, have lived only for about 100,000 years. Many questions about chemical evolution, the evolution of single cells, archaea and bacteria, the birth of eukaryotic cells, the oxygenation of the atmosphere after the evolution of photosynthesis about two billion years ago, must precede the birth of the first animal life on our planet. We have come a long way since then. In his book, Sapiens, the Israeli historian, Yuval Harari, traces the evolution of humankind. He asks an interesting question, which I paraphrase. When, in the course of human evolution, does human behavior begin to disregard the biological imperatives, survival and reproduction, that dominate animal behavior and become increasingly influenced by recent history? In Harari's words, the cognitive revolution is accordingly the point when history declared its independence from biology. The immense diversity of imagined realities, I repeat, imagined realities that sapiens invented and the resulting diversity of behavior patterns are the main components of what we call cultures. Once cultures appeared, they never ceased to change and develop. These unstoppable alterations are what we call history. It is important to study the evolution of cultures and to ask what will happen as cultures evolve even further. From the cognitive revolution onwards, Harari says, narr historical narratives replace biological theories as our primary means of explaining the development of Homo sapiens. To understand the rise of Christianity or the French Revolution, it is not enough to comprehend the interaction of genes, hormones, and organisms. It is necessary to take into account the interaction of ideas, images, and fantasies. Today, very often, it is ideas, images, and fantasies that dominate our lives. Comparative genomics tells us that human beings are a minor branch in the tree of life, budding from the broader branch of eukarya. Life on Earth is dominated by the microbial branches, bacteria, and archaea. Our closest neighbors are chimpanzees, rats, mice, pigs, horses, cattle, sheep, and dogs. There is a comforting unity in biology. Yet, human history, driven by civilizational influences and the evolution of culture, appear to be sadly divisive. The coronavirus has breached all political, religious, and ethnic boundaries. No one was spared. Reminding us that politics and religion, two of our favorite pastimes worldwide, afford no protection against the force of nature. I'm coming to the end, and I ask, why do I draw your attention to such a disparate group of subjects? It is because of the environment, climatic, social and political in which we live today. Some reflection on the roles of science in understanding nature may allow us to introspect on the course of human history and attempt to rationalize why the world today is the way it is. Science is a deeply humbling subject, and every day we are reminded of our imperfect understanding of even the subjects of our daily research. 
It is this humility that is important in any sphere of human activity. Learning is a continuing and never-ending process. Any speaker at a convocation is supposed not to think about the subjects that he's interested in, but should actually give good advice to students. In a long life, I've learned never advise anybody, but I will end by telling you that there are two qualities that will stand you in good stead in whatever you wish to do. Resilience and imagination. In research and indeed in every other walk of life, failure is more common than success. Overcoming the fear of failure is often the first step towards success. Let your imagination take you forward. It's been a privilege to address you, congratulate you, and may I wish you all the very best in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Balaram, for sharing such reflective and persuasive learnings from your life with us. It is now time to award the gra uh, sorry. It is now time for awarding degrees to our graduating students. I request Dean of Academic Affairs. May I please humbly request Dean of Academic Affairs, Professor Bharat Ramaswamy, to take the DS and Chancellor Professor Rudrangsha Mukherjee to hand out the degrees. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, uh, everybody. Um, Honorable Chancellor, may I request you to admit the students present at the convocation to the degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of Ashoka University, I admit you all to the degrees, sorry, by virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of Ashoka University, I admit you all to the degree of the undergraduate program, and I charge you that ever in your thought and action, you prove yourself worthy of the honor conferred on you. Uh, Professor Mukherjee, it's my privilege to present the students of the bachelor's program, whose names are set out on the list, and who have qualified to receive the degree. I request that they may please be awarded the degree. Adil Anand. Akash Madhav Rao. Amiya Dhilan. Magna Cum Laude. Arushi Basar, Cum Laude. Arya Pradeep Ganapati, Cum Laude. Aryan, Aryan Mavani, Cum Laude. Ayushman Jetli. Abbas Ali Zaveri. Abhay Sanet Singh Bhadoria. Abhimanyu Sharma. Abhishek Roy, Kam Laude. Abigail D'Souza, Magna Kam Laude. Adhya Kaza. Aditya Anantarajan, Kam Laude. Aditi Sridhar Summa Kam Laude. Aditya Gupta Summa Kam Laude. A 
आदित्य तिवारी सुमा कमलौड़े अद्विका सरफ अग्रिया रमजान सत्र अली अहला फैजल हुसैन ऐश्वर्या दानी कम लौड़े अक्षली अर्चना गुगले सुमा कम लौड़े अक्षरा कुलकर्णी सुमा कम लौड़े अलंकृति दसरी एलन बिनू एलेक्स मैग्ना कम लौड़े अमन हिमाच सिंगा कम लौड़े अमन महेश्वरी अमन रामेश्वर कृष्णा कम लौड़े अंबर नील कम लौड़े अंबिका कृष्ण पिल्ले कम लौड़े अमेया नायक मैना कम लौड़े कुमार मैगना कम लौड़े अमर मुस्ताफा सुरा अमोहा शर्मा अनघा रामानुजम एनली दत्ता चौधरी आनंद चौहान अनन्या शर्मा कम लौड़े अनंता भूषण कम लौड़े राकेश जैन कम लौड़े अनन्या अग्रवाला अनन्या बाटला अंकिता झुंझुनवाला कम लौड़े निकेत शर्मा अनिरुद्ध भास्करन मैग्ना कम लौड़े अनिरुद्धा मेठी कम लौड़े अनिरुद्ध सतीश कम लौड़े अंजली मदन गार्ली मैग्ना कम लौड़े अन्ना उप्रीति मैग्ना कम लौड़े अनोखी मेहरा मैग्ना कम लौड़े अनुष्का गेहानी अंश गोयल
अंश अंश गुप्ता कम लौड़े अनुग्रह सिंह अनुष्का गुप्ता अनुष्णा पाल मैग्ना कम लौड़े अनुश्री प्रताप कम लौड़े अपूर्वा अरोड़ा अर्चिषा शर्मा मैग्ना कम लौड़े अर्चिता श्रीराम कम लौड़े अर्जुन भंडारी कम लौड़े अर्जुन खन्ना कम लौड़े अर्जुना राहुल कोमतम मैग्ना कम लौड़े अर्नव गुप्ता अर्पिता घोष सुमा कम लौड़े अर्श काबरा मैग्ना कम लौड़े अर्शिया जैन अर्शिया सूद अरुणिमा सेन आरुषि गुजराल आरुषि कपूर कम लौड़े आरुषि शर्मा आर्या खारे आर्या शुक्ला आर्यमन अग्रवाल मैग्ना कम लौड़े आर्यमन चावला आर्यमन कपूर आर्यन गुप्ता मैग्ना कम लौड़े आर्यन गुप्ता मैग्ना कम आर्यन जैन आर्यन मल्होत्रा मैग्ना कम लौड़े आर्यन महापात्रा आर्यन यादव आरजू गुप्ता आशा कुमारी आशीषा बिशोई कम लौड़े अश्लेषा पुरोहित मैग्ना कम लौड़े अश्विन सलमपुरिया अथर्व अश्विन आप्ते
शांति दीपक कम लौड़े अविरल आनंद कम लौड़े अविरत कंपानी अविशी श्रीवास्तव मैग्ना कम लौड़े अव्यय हृदय आयुष बहल भावना पुलिपाका सुमा कम लौड़े भाविका सिंह कम लौड़े भाविया सिंह भाविया सोनी मैग्ना कम लौड़े भाव्य जैन ब्रेंडा घोष कम लौड़े चाहत जैन कम लौड़े चाहत सरोगी कम लौड़े चैतन्य नायर मैग्ना कम लौड़े चंचल बजोरिया कम लौड़े चिन्मय प्रताप मेनन कम लौड़े दाओ एमी लमार दामनी जैन सुमा कम लौड़े दया अत्रेय दीक्षा पूरी सुमा कम लौड़े दीक्षिता सोइन सुमा कम लौड़े देविकी दीवान देवेश दागा दीप जॉर्ज कम लौड़े धीरज पिया धृति भट्ट मैग्ना कम लौड़े ध्रुव रजौरिया दिया आनंद मैग्नकम लौड़े दिशा जैन कम लौड़े दिव्या सूचक मैग्ना कम लौड़े दिव्यांशु यदुवंशी कम लौड़े दिया खुरदिया एकांश शर्मा रिजा पेंसे सैम्यूल इमानुअल बंदा ईशा अशर ईशा मंचंदाना मैग्ना कम लौड़े ईशना शर्मा मैग्ना कम लौड़े गणीर सिंह चड्डा मैग्ना कम लौड़े
గణేష్ గోపాల్ నాయుడు గౌరంగ్ మోదీ గౌరవ్ అగర్వాల్ కమ్ లాడే గౌరవ్ దీక్షిత్ గౌరీదాస్ గుప్తా కమ్ లాడే గౌతమ్ గోయల్ కమ్ లాడే గౌతమ్ యజమాన్ కమ్ లాడే గీతికా శర్మ నగ్న కమ్ లాడే గుర్కీరత్ సింగ్ నయ్యర్ మ్యాగ్న కమ్ లాడే హర్ష్ గుప్తా కమ్ లాడే హర్షిత శర్మ కమ్ లాడే హియా చౌదరి సుమ కమ్ లాడే ఈలా మనీష్ సుమకం లోడే ఈషా మౌలిక్ షా మ్యాగ్నకం లోడే ఈషాన్ జైన్ ఈషాన సురేఖ కమ్ లోడే ఈషానీ చందా ఇషిత చిప్ శర్మ ఇషిత సూరజ్ అహూజా ఈవాన్ షనవాస్ థ్యాంక్ యూ డీన్ రామస్వామి ఐ నౌ రిక్వెస్ట్ డీన్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ ప్రొఫెసర్ అమిత బాగస్కర్ టు ప్లీజ్ టేక్ ద టీఎస్ and continue with degree announcements requesting chancellor professor mukherjee to please continue handing out the degrees i'm doing j to r jagat kafle suma kum laude jal neela mahesh srinivasulu janavi hada janavi gupta jasmine nelson kum laude jayati gupta kum laude jeevesh saxena magna cum laude jonathan livingston c juhi singh negi cum laude juned ahmed baba Jyotika Punjabi Cum Laude Karan Handa Magna Cum Laude Kartikeya Dakta Cum Laude Kartikeya Reddy Cum Laude Katyayani Singh Magna Cum Laude Khan Sabiha Shamsuddin Khushi Goyal Cum Laude Khyati Tapadiya Cum Laude Kiyan Kharighat Cum Laude K. 
Kiara Kaiza driver cum laude Kopala Rajeshri Rao Koena Rai Magna cum laude Kripa Krishna cum laude Krishanu Kashyap Krishna Rengaraj Kriti Pachisya Kritin Gulati Magna Cum Laude Kushagra Bansal Kushagra Seli Lakshmi Aditi Bhupana Palli Magna Cum Laude Mahir M. Narula Manya Agarwal Manya Mishra Manya Vashisht Madhav Gupta Madhuri Lidu Cum Laude Mahika Dhar Magna Cum Laude Mahia Agarwal Maitri Srinivas Cum Laude Malvika Gera Cum Laude Manal Mirza Manan Chugani Manishri Manish Tote Manasi Narula Cum Laude Manaswani Singh Manav Sharma Cum Laude Mansha Bajaj Mantek Singh Anand Manya Karnani Cum Laude Manya Tandan Mayank Bharadwaj Cum Laude Meghna Krishna Mehek Kaur Kharbanda Mehul Chaudhuri Mihika Sonthalia Magna Cum Laude Miloni Shah Magna Cum Laude Meera Francis Venu Gopalan Lin Cum Laude Misha Singh Cum Laude Mitali Advani Magna Cum Laude Mitali Kirit Sakarya Mrigank Rajagopalan Cum Laude Mukund Kedia
मुस्कान चुक नोबरुन बरुआ कुम लाउड नचिकेत मीधा मैग्ना कुम लाउड नजम यू साकिब नंदिनी कृष्णन नव्य गद्दम नील वैद्य मैग्ना कुम लाउड नीता कुमारी नेहा मैथ्यू कुम लाउड नेहा शेख मैग्ना कुम लाउड नहरीन फातिमा नेमाली सिद्धार्थ नेत्र नटराजन मैग्ना कुम लाउड निखिल अनिरुद्ध निकिता सेठी निरंजन राजेश मैग्ना कुम लाउड निशांत सिंह कुम लाउड निष्ठा बिमल दास कुम लाउड निष्ठा खुंटेता नितिला आर नितिन झा कुम लाउड नित्य दीप मैग्ना कुम लाउड नियति पेंदकंटी सुमा कुम लाउड नूर शर्मा कुम लाउड नूपुर मुहाजन कुम लाउड नीमा तेंजिन मैग्ना कुम लाउड ओम्या जोशी ऊर्जा इंजीनियर सुमा कुम लाउड पार्थवी राज सिंह सुमा कुम लाउड पंखुड़ी नारायण सुमा कुम लाउड परितोष पांडा पर्णिका वैद कुम लाउड पीयूष वसुधा नरेश मैग्ना कुम लाउड पूजा रवि मैग्ना कुम लाउड प्रभाव अग्रवाल प्रहलाद बिस्वाल प्रेज योहानस कासा कुम लाउड प्रकृति मालिनी कुमार मैग्ना कुम लाउड प्रणव कुमार अयंगार कुम लाउड प्रणय प्रकाश कुम लाउड प्रथम अरोड़ा कुम लाउड प्रीत नागपाल प्रियल 
Kamal Sethi. Priyambada Mohata Kum Lauda. Kutsia Rahman Magna Kum Lauda. Rabani Bhatti Kum Lauda. Radhika Panat. Ragalika V. Magna Cum Laude Raghav Nair Raghav Rastogi Magna Cum Laude Ragi Rajiv Cum Laude Rajvi Mayank Parikh, Magna Cum Laude. Rene Sharma. Resham Anand. Reva Shingal. Priya Hajarnavis Riya Khandelwal Suma Kum Laude Ridhima Sharma Rishabh Katakya Rishi Krishna Swami Rishika Aroda, Magna Cum Laude. Rishita Chaudhuri, Cum Laude. Ritika Fernandez, Cum Laude. Riti Bhatia, Magna Cum Laude. Ritika Kaila, Cum Laude. Rivan Sengupta Cum Laude Rochan Mahapatra Rohan Agarwal Rohan Chopra Suma Cum Laude Rohan George, Cum Laude. Rohan Pai, Cum Laude. Rohit Rajak, Magna Cum Laude. Ruchika Gayakwar. Ruhan Shah, Summa Cum Laude. Rushil Natarajan, Malu Pillai, Magna Cum Laude. Riti Bhattacharya, Magna Cum Laude. Thank you, Dean Bhavaska. I now request Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Debushruti Roy Chaudhary, to please take the DS and continue with degree announcements, requesting Chancellor Professor Mukherjee to please continue handing out the degrees. Sahajo Ajay Jain, Kam Laude. Sahir Khanna, Kam Laude. Saina Suri Sakina Sehorwala Sumakam Laude Saksham Trikha Sakshi Mehta Magna Kam Laude 
संवेक कुशल बंसाली संवीत जाटिया संयुक्ति श्रीराम मैग्ना कमलारे संचिता कुथेथुर सुमकम लॉरे सानिध्या गौतम संजना बांका मैग्नकम लॉरे संजना वडला पतला संजय कृष्ण आर संजना कार्तिक सुमकम लॉरे संजना विवेक मैग्नकम लॉरे सना बंसल कम लॉरे संस्कार दास संस्कृति पांडे संस्कृति सिंह कमलारे सानिया सेठ संयुक्ता सिंह मैग्ना कमलारे सारा सिंह सारा ग्रेस चेरियन कमलारे सरगम मित्रा सुमा कमलारे सत्वा वसवादा सिंगुप्ता सुमा कमलारे सोमिया सेठ सेहर बटरा मैग्ना कमलारे सेजल जैन कमलारे शागनीक देवराय मैग्ना कमलारे शालिनी बलोदी शंभवी लाल मैग्ना कमलारे शनाया कपूर शारन राजेश पटोले शिरीन कालरा सुमा कमलारे शिव शर्मा शिवा राजपूत शिवी मोहन शोहान स्वस्तिक मोहपात्रा कमलारे श्रेया मल्होत्रा कमलारे श्री भट्टाचार्य कमलारे श्री रुंगता श्रे बवेजा श्रेया खोब्रगारे सुमा कमलारे श्रेया संवत्सर कमलारे श्रेयस श्रीरामा माधव विन्नकोटा श्रीमान विष्णान पद्मनावन श्रुति चंद्रकांत बंसोरे श्रुति क्रलेती कमलारे 
शुभा सरस्वती नेदुंगरी कमलादे शुभी पाल सुमा कमलादे सिद्धार्थ वेंकटेश सुमा कमलादे सिद्ध बक्शी सिद्धार्थ सीजू सिद्धक बाजवा सिमरन शर्मा सिया सरफ सिया शर्मा कमलाडे स्मायन कार्तिक चढ़ा स्नेहा रीटा सेबास्टियन कमलाडे स्नेहा रॉय सुमा कमलाडे स्नेहल शिरपुरकर स्निग्धा राजवंशी कमलाडे सोफिया बगुलिन कमलाडे सोहम दे कमलाडे सुनाक्षी गुप्ता कमलाडे सोनाल दुगर मैग्ना कमलाडे सोनाली गर मैग्ना कमलाडे सोमिल अगरवाल मैग्ना कमलाडे सोमिया जैन सोमिया मारी कमलाडे श्रोति मुखोपाध्याय मैग्ना कमलाडे स्पंदन पांड्या सुमा कमलाडे स्प्रिहा धन कमलाडे स्प्रिहा पाल मैग्ना कमलाडे श्रिया घोष सुमा कमलाडे सृष्टि सिक्का सृष्टि बफना कमलाडे स्तुति कुलकर्णी मैग्ना कमलाडे सुदर्शन रामानुजम श्रीराम आत्रेय सुमा कमलाडे सूर्य प्रताप सिंह सुभन दुरल झा तनीश प्रतीश खिबासरा तनीशा मंदाना कमलाडे तन्वी त्रेहान सुमा कमलाडे तानिया तानिया चैटर्जी मैग्ना कमलाडे तानिया ग्रेवाल कमलाडे तारा दुराय स्वामी मैग्ना कमलाडे तेजस सेवक तेंजीन नमसे तेंजीन जोकी कमलाडे
शाह दुराय स्वामी त्रिशा देव मैग्ना कमला रे उदय वीर सिंह वी सुमा कमला रे उर्वी जैन उर्विजा केजरीवाल कमला रे वैभव मौर्य वानी कुमार वंश वर्मा वंशिका चौहान वरुण अग्रवाल कमला रे वसुधा सदानी वसुंधरा प्रसाद मैग्ना कमला रे वासवी अग्रवाल कमला रे वेदांश उबेराय मैग्ना कमला रे विकी सिंह विधि गुप्ता विदुषी प्रसाद कमला रे विजयादित्य सिंह राठौर कमला रे विक्रम तांबी विनायक अग्रवाल विनीत तिवारी विपांशी गोयल कमला दे विशाखा द्विवेदी वृषिन भाटिया वृतिका पट्टपु ऋतिका शर्मा सुमा कमला रे यशस्वी पारेख कमला रे यशस्विनी गुप्ता कमला रे यशराज नंदा कमला रे यशपी अग्रवाल यशवी जैन सुमा कमला रे गायत्री उन्नी कृष्णन समर्थ जैन रिया माबेन हेरी खुशी मेहता उदुपी जोत्ना राव आदित्य वेद शर्मा कमला रे अहाना बैनर्जी मैग्ना कमला रे आशका कौशल शाह आदित्य रतन भल्ला कमला रे अंजलि रंबा वाघमारे कमला रे आराध्या जैन
Arnav Kundra, Ashita Kumar, Avantika Pasari, Irin Reva Wali, Guru Nathan S. Jatin Abhir, Magna Cum Laude. Kavya Ganesh, Magna Cum Laude. Shitija. Malavika Anand. Medini Chobra, Magna Cum Laude. Mukundan A. Sumakam Lade Nageshwar Kumar Ojas Tripathi Sara Muthadev Shubham Dhiman Siddharth Makar Surabhi Singh Vedehi Gupta Sumakam Laude Varun Agarwal A. Marla Kamlade Vishesh Verma Nitan Pandya Dia Sud Swasti Sindhu Sanju Vikashini A. Tanyu Vidrom. Drumil Deliwala Magna Cum Laude. Arundhuti Bala Subramaniam Magna Cum Laude. Nishchal Bharadwaj. Raymond Sharuk Bhaka. Sahas Jain. Thank you, Professor Mukherjee. Thank you, Dean Roy Chaudhary. <coughs> uh, Chancellor Professor Mukherjee, I now present such students who are not in the convocation. I request that they may please be awarded the degree in absentia. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of Ashoka University, I award the undergraduate degrees in absentia to all those successful students who could not receive the degree in person at this convocation. Thank you, sir. We will now have the graduated students take the oath. I request all students to please stand up. I request Chancellor Professor Dramshu Mukherjee to kindly administer the oath.
I'll take this slowly. Please repeat after me. The ancient Indian king, after whom this university is named, asked the question, what is Thamma? He answered, it is having few faults and many good deeds, mercy, charity, truthfulness, and integrity. I commit myself to these values and through them move from the unreal to the real, from darkness to light, and from death to immortality. Please settle down. Thank you. With this, we have come to the end of the ceremony. I request the Pro Vice Chancellor, Venkat Ishwara, to bring the proceedings to a close by delivering the vote of thanks. Well, well, this happens to be the largest gathering at a convocation in Ashoka's history, so well done. <laughs> Dear Professor Balram, a big thank you for taking out time to be present at the university's convocation, especially towards the end of May when temperatures were threatening to be above 45. Uh, today is a big day for all graduating students. Congratulations to each and every one of you present. Well done and richly deserved. Look around you, soak in the environment, and preserve all the memories of the day. And I hope you've taken a ton of selfies to capture today's moments. To all the parents and families gathered here, thank you for being present and making the day memorable. We are grateful because you chose Ashoka as the preferred university for your children, and we hope that their individual journeys and growth have reinforced your convictions. Thank you to all faculty who have taught and mentored and inspired the students. You have been the primary catalyst in their lives, and the journeys would not have been possible without your presence and Ashoka would not be what it is today without your contribution. And a big round of applause to the team that has worked to put together today's convocation, the logistics of two events. The logistics of two events must have kept you up for several nights. Well done. And I'd like to point out a few people. I'd like to thank the entire convocations team for this gorgeous day starting with the chair, Deboshruti Roy Choudhury, co-chair, Aniha Brar, core team members, Anirban Chakravarti and Shuli Biswas, the OAA led by Dean Ramaswamy, Prithika Sharma, Disha Chandra, Bulbul Yadav, Sachin Sharma, team operations led by Bhaskar Mishra, Ashish Pathak, Pooja Manaktala, IT led by Anu Batra, Chandresh Kumar, Sandeep Ladwal, PR and communications led by Ali Imran, Deepak Wamsi, Samantha Samson, Savan Vahid. Exam office led by Shantanu Kundu, and then Harshit Takkar, Anu Singh from the parents and alumni office. The, the university is thankful for the cooperation extended by the registrar's office, starting with admissions all the way to the convocation and beyond. We are grateful to Vice President External Engagement and his team for their contributions towards building the Ashokan brand through their diverse offerings. The efforts of the admission and outreach teams for bringing in students year after year is critical to Ashoka's success. Thank you. We also are grateful to the development and financial aid offices for the commitment to make the Ashoka education accessible to all our students. A big thank you to our parents' office and communications team for carrying the message and the mission of Ashoka across the world. 
Ashoka is grateful to the Dean of Global Education, Summer and Strategic Programs for her office being instrumental in giving our students global exposure through our institutional partnership, uh, partnerships and exchange programs. The university is indebted to the Dean of Research and Dean of Faculty and their offices for ensuring that a stellar team of scholars and researchers are present at Ashoka. We express our sincere, sincere thanks to the Dean of Academic Affairs as well as their entire office as they work tirelessly to enable diverse academic pursuits of our students throughout the time at Ashoka. The Career Development Office deserves our heartfelt appreciation for helping our students achieve their professional goals. We also express our gratitude to all the IT personnel for their efforts in ensuring that students are able to pursue their academics with ease. This is an opportunity to thank the Centers of Excellence at Ashoka for offering our students an opportunity to be part of the innovative programs and scientific research far beyond our curricular requirements. The Center for Writing and Communication, the Office of Learning Support, and the Library have been guiding our students and nurturing them in the various functions. A big thank you. The university is grateful to the Center for Wellbeing for providing the Ashoka community with a much needed space for comfort and care. This is also a moment to appreciate the contributions of the Office of Student Affairs, who is a critical part of every student's life at Ashoka, be it in their extracurricular interests or their residential experience. A special shout out to the sports team for ensuring that students enjoy a sporting experience on campus. The university is truly grateful to Vice President Operations and his entire team, which includes the infirmary, housekeeping, maintenance, dining, security, transport, laundry, horticulture, and other departments for ensuring a hassle-free experience on campus. I'd like to speci specifically acknowledge the entire support staff at Ashoka who support us in practical ways behind the scenes. We owe them a debt of gratitude. Now, the next one is special. To all the bhaiyas and didis, this day is yours too. You have toiled hard over the past four years behind the scenes to ensure that all our students on campus lead a comfortable life. To each and every one of you, a big thank you. To the graduating students, stay connected with Ashoka. You have completed your journey as a student but just embarked on the road of becoming an alum, come back and support the university that has nurtured you and mentored you. Assist our future batches and students, they need your experience and wisdom. The alumni office will work closely with you in this regard. I'd be amiss if I, don't, if I didn't thank the founders of the university who have very graciously supported the institution over the years. Some of them are present over here. A big thank you to you. Finally, a thank you to Chancellor Mukherjee, Vice Chancellor Roy Choudhury, and to all our guests for making this day memorable. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Everyone, please rise for the national anthem. Janagana mana adhina.
time for a big congratulations to the graduating class of 2023. Let's have a huge round of applause. I request the students and guests to please be seated till the convocation procession exits the hall. for your presence on this important occasion. Before we depart for tea, may I have your attention for uh, some de announcements, please. Graduated students are requested to collect their alumni booklets and memento from the alumni desk at the Sports MPH. You're requested to please return your gowns, hats and scarves at the dance room, which is at ground floors, Sports MPH. Merchandise for the graduating class and their proud parents is available at the merchandise store at the atrium. There's also a live photo counter for you to capture these moments and take a picture home. And last, but certainly not the least, tea and snacks have been served at the sunken field. Please seek assistance from our volunteers for direction. I would request all guests to be seated till the student procession exits the hall. <laughs> 